so Robin, where does this lead? I, I, I mean, how bad, you deal with this every day. You're in the shelters with these women. You, you hold their hands, you walk through their lives. This is, is this gonna get better on its own or is this gonna get worse? No, it will get worse. Uh, it, it really does come down to a choice that you have to make and that is that you have to do whatever it takes to get out of that situation. You have to take the steps and I know it's hard and I, and I know it's scary. And if you will go to WinGeorgiaSmile.org, we have the resources on there. We list programs on there that you, can, that you can read and that you can learn what you have to do. But the first step is to build a support system around you. And sometimes that's friends, that's family members, that's coworkers. But you have to build a support system that will help you do this. And you do whatever it takes. And sometimes it, it's a slow process. You start building the, uh, a bag for when you, it's time to leave. And in that, you put important papers. You put what money you have. You put special things for your children that will bring them comfort and then you do not listen to his threats. The number one tool an abuser uses is to isolate you and then start abusing you with threats and telling you that he's gonna take your children from you. And another important thing to do is to document, just as you said, document everything that he's doing with pictures and telling your other friends and everything about it. But it, there is a step and a process, but the number one thing you have to do is to remember you have to be safe and for you and your children. Talk about separation assault for a minute because that period of time when you separate from the abuser and they panic is a high risk period of time. That is when the most deaths occur. After you leave your abuser, that's when more deaths occur. So that's why I say take your time and do it with safety in mind. Yeah, I mean, the, the point is it's not easy and, and, it, and, it, and it is dangerous to try to get away because it's what's called the frustration effect. Abusers try to control and when you slip away, they panic and they try to increase that control and that's when they get desperate and do desperate things, which is why this going to mom's house or sister's house is often not enough because they know where mom's house is. They know where sister's house is. And, and look, this is a situation that is very volatile. You're putting yourself at risk. You're putting your child at risk. You're putting your unborn child at risk. Th that is highly unstable behavior. You've got to calm down. You've got to quit believing. Has he ever done one sustained effort to change who he is? No. Has he ever gone to anger management classes in a sustained way? Has he ever gone to any type of therapy program in a sustained way? Has he ever done anything to make a serious attempt to change who he is? No, he... Um went to, he started going to a batter's intervention, and as soon as they set him up on a 34-week course, he stopped going. Yeah. So you think <laughs> that this is going to just cure up on its own? No. It is not. And you know, clearly your problem-solving skills are not good. His, his management skills, emotional skills, coping skills, stress management skills are not good. This situation is, is bad, volatile, needs to be changed dramatically.